Hey, and welcome to the final screencast of the second section. Here, we're going to take what you've learned up until now and use it to create a really cool image grid. I've already created the setup. We're using the technique for responsiveness, which we talked about previously using auto fit in combination with min max, which gives us a nice responsive grid that varies the amount of columns. And the rows are implicitly created and are 75 pixels tall. In the index.html, you can see that I've added an image to each of the items in the grid. That's of course the images you can see here. And this is already, I'd say, a pretty cool grid. However, not all of these images fit the frame they're given equally well. Some of them might be more horizontal, while other images might be more vertical. I also have a few favorites, which I think deserve a little bit of extra attention. And you can see that I've actually given some of these item classes like vertical, horizontal, and big. These are the images which I don't think fit well into only one grid cell. So let's go ahead and make the horizontal images twice as wide. We'll head over to the CSS, to the horizontal class, and we'll set the grid column property. Now, previously we do something like one, that's the starting value. And then, for example, do span two so that they'd span across two columns. However, as you can see, that'll force all the horizontal images, which is this one and this one, for example, to start on the first column line. If we enlarge in the grid, you'll see that they'll, that they'll still stick to the first grid column line, which amongst other things leaves open spaces in the grid, which is something we're going to talk about later on. So what we rather want to do is swap out this one here with auto. Now you can see they start on whatever column line they were given initially. This one starts here and these two now happen to start on the first column line. But if we change the width, you can see that the horizontal images start on various grid lines and not just one. And what we actually also can do here is remove this entirely and just do grid column span two. So the grid column and grid row properties can take a lot of different values and combinations. And at this point, this is the simplest we can do. However, I wanted to show you the various alternatives. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the vertical images, the ones we want to make taller than the rest of the images. So here we'll use grid row and set that to span two. And as you can see, this one and this one, they're now taller than all the others. And now we've gotten a few blank cells throughout the grid, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. However, let's first make the big images, the ones we want to highlight, twice as tall and twice as wide as the normal images. Grid column, span two, and grid row, span two. And now you can see this image here, and this one here, and this one here, are really getting the attention they deserve. But we need to fix these blank spots here, because that doesn't look nice. So why do these blank spots appear? To understand that, let's look at how the grid lays out each of the items. It starts up here in the top left corner, lays out the first item, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and then it needs to continue on the next row, which is here, and it tries to fit in the sixth image. However, when it's about to lay out that one, it can't fit it. As it only has one grid cell available here, however, the sixth item is a big one. It's this one here. Let's double check that in the HTML. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that is indeed a big item. So what it then does is that it continues on looking at the next cell that's already taken. So it jumps onto the next cell again. And here it actually has enough space to lay out the big item. And then it simply continues laying out the next item here, here, and then one here, leaving that spot here blank. Wouldn't it be great if we somehow could fill these spots? Well, we can. And to do that, we're going to use a property called grid auto flow. It's by default set to row, meaning that it'll lay out the items one row at a time, just as we talked about, starting here and going 
across the first row and then jumping next to the second row and continuing on like that. However, if we set it to dense, we'll use the so-called dense packing algorithm, which attempts to fill the holes in the grid. If there are holes in the grid and smaller items come up later, then it'll move those up to fill the blank spaces. So if we go back to row, we see that this space is blank. And the next item in the grid, which could potentially fit in here, would be not this one, the sixth item, but the seventh item of the waterfall here. So let's look at what happens when you change the dense. And indeed, the waterfall image has now jumped back to this position and filled that hole. And this works regardless of how wide the screen is. As you can see, we have a super cool image grid now, which looks really hard to create actually. However, we've done it simply using these 20 lines of CSS. And finally, I wanna mention that this dense feature here is an example of source order independence, which is a huge win for CSS. It means that the grid can arrange the items regardless of how they're laid out in the markup. Here, we simply use the markup for what it's supposed to be used for, markup for content, and we're using the CSS for what it's supposed to be used for, styling. And we're not limited to whatever order we laid out the images initially. So source order independence gives you a lot of flexibility. So this marks the end of this section. You now know quite a lot about building advanced CSS grid layouts. However, be sure to check out the bonus material if you're hungry to learn even more. Thank you.